Tropical disturbances persist in the Western Pacific on today's Tropical Weather Bulletin. And now the latest around the wide world of tropics. Tropical Weather Bulletin for May 8th. Around the world it's still looking relatively quiet with only one or two areas of interest, one that we've got marked in the Western Pacific and nothing else around the world. Unclassified is our operation status which means that we're not really uh, doing anything right now in terms of tropical stuff. Well it's 24 days until Atlantic hurricane season and the Atlantic itself is fairly quiet. Of course the US is still dealing with more severe weather with a moderate risk in effect later today. It's going to be another very long day of streaming. In the, western, in the eastern Pacific it's 7 days until hurricane season so we're getting very close now and we're seeing one or two spots there blowing up in the lower latitudes uh, but nothing organized and nothing expected uh, until at least early next week. We'll talk about that in a minute. In the western pacific there's 30 percent chance uh, 92w an invest has been designated and i think it's going to be that one that gets to become this tropical cyclone if it forms and it's going to be heading towards the philippines uh, via palau north indian ocean looking quiet apart from those very low latitudes there's a few storms there right now as well and we have some thunderstorms blowing up in papua new guinea uh, and all across the island of new guinea really uh, but that area of interest that we we're looking at a couple of days ago near there in e indonesia uh, appears to have died off. Southwest Indian Ocean, there's still a little train of thunderstorms there and I did look at rainfall estimates and it will produce significant amounts of rainfall up towards the coast of northern Tanzania and Kenya, which they've had a very wet period with flooding so it's not going to be good news over there and of course Cyclone Hidaya. And then in the South Pacific we've got nothing active right now here, uh, but there are a few flare-ups uh, generally near Samoa. So that's our worldwide roundup. Let's take a look at Invest 92W. It's currently 394 kilometers from Pulusuk, 451 from Satawal, 479 from Lamo Trek, 621 from Woliai, and 1148 from Guam. All those locations there, mostly uh, small atolls in the Micronesian Islands in the Chuk and Yap regions. It's about 1200 kilometers from Yap as well, this system, and it will be heading more in that direction rather than towards Guam. We'll be staying fairly low latitude, at least for the time being. Let's check latest satellite imagery, and you can start to see it uh, show up a little bit more on the right hand side. Look towards the left there as well, you can see less. Uh, less going on towards Palau there that was one or two of those old disturbances but this is the new one that we're looking at here throwing up a little bit of convection those little islands you see on the top right that's Chuk um, in the Micronesian chain and you'll see here there's no real center uh, but if there was it would be along the western and northern sides of it that would be producing the highest amounts of convection there with some little areas getting into the minus 80s but in general, it's uh, looking a bit of a sorry state right now, and it will take some time for this thing to get organized and develop. Um, models have backed off, actually, on how uh, on it developing, at least in the interim. Well, it might happen a little bit later on and possibly next week. Let's look at the Atlantic right now. There's just a little burst of thunderstorms there off the outer banks of North Carolina and a chain of storms that are continuing to uh, plague the central and getting towards the eastern part of the United States there, which prompted yesterday's uh, serious uh, coverage that we were doing with emergency coverage at times. Now, this is the eastern Pacific showing those little systems again. Uh, looking quite decent, that one on the left, uh, but now towards the center uh, but obviously no organization around it it's just a few big bursts of convection that are flaring up there far away from any land another few wide infrared of the western pacific showing those little storms blowing up on the right hand side that's the invest and on the left remnants of the previous one 
This is the uh, Bay of Bengal and the Indochina region uh, showing in general quite a few storms and rain showers occurring all across from eastern Bangladesh through to Vietnam. And this is near Puerto Rico and the Virgin Islands right now where there's a flash flood warning uh, because there's uh, more storms occurring here too. Very discreet, well not discreet but very small ones. And this is southern China which is also undergoing quite a lot of uh, rain showers and thunderstorms today and maybe affecting Hong Kong as well. Most of the sea surface temperature graphic today haven't been updated since yesterday because there's a glitch in the system but not much will have changed the eastern pacific with very warm temperatures up to 32 degrees celsius the atlantic loop current looking very good indeed now with temperatures getting up into the 26 to 28 degree range and off the coast of florida as well uh, caribbean sea looking good too specifically southwest in the western pacific uh, off the philippines still getting those warmer waters they are increasing every day 30 degrees off eastern luzon spreading eastwards and in the bay of bengal extremely warm waters there up to 33 degrees celsius to the southwest of the andaman islands and very warm in the andaman sea and the lower bay of bengal Southwest Indian Ocean for what it's worth. Time is running out for anything to form now, especially after the recent storm Hidaya uh, over Mauritius. It's still around 26, 27 degrees Celsius. And off the coast of Australia, those temperatures are still looking pretty good too. 29 degrees in a few spots, maybe even touching 30 still off the northwestern coast of Western Australia. South Pacific still looking good with very warm waters in those lower latitudes, but they are going off the boil around New Caledonia. And compared to average, it looks like this. The blue zones are below average, the orange zones are above. The Atlantic, as a general rule, is quite a bit above average, up to 3 or 4 degrees in some parts of the MDR, although there is still a cool spot in the Sargasso Sea, but it does appear to be shrinking. The East Pacific's looking pretty good there, although a cooler temperatures further north, but in the equatorial regions as well, a little bit of a cool spot, the sign of that potential La Nina. In the Western Pacific, actually one or two areas just getting slightly below average there off the Philippines, uh, but still in general it's looking good. Oceanic heat content looks like this in the South Pacific, still looking very good uh, off the northern coast of uh, Fiji and in the Eastern Pacific there's three orange areas right now uh, looking interesting. Uh, that is uh, certainly on par, on course for a decent season and in the Western Pacific extremely high values just off the Philippines for the first time this year and in the Atlantic this is what it's looking like here in the Caribbean. Good values here once again, green zones and beyond really. Uh, show significant oceanic heat content for sustained tropical cyclone development and rapid intensification, especially near Jamaica. Here's the GFS computer model then for the next five days and if you've been watching recently you might be a little bit surprised to see that the model has backed off a bit. Uh, it is showing that this system will be moving west-northwest and is nearly forming near Palau by the end of that five day period. But if you're struggling to see it I've done a little illustration for you. There it is moving along just to the south really of the Micronesian Islands and then moving on, uh, stalling a little bit for a time on the 12th, 13th and then moving up towards Palau. As for rainfall expectations, well it will be that corridor that will be getting the largest amounts of rain, uh, but thankfully hardly any islands are in that zone, they're just a little bit further north. All of the Micronesian islands will get a fair amount of rain this week by the looks of things, uh, and indeed some parts of northern Luzon will get some rain as well. That's not associated with this potential storm, uh, but you will get some rain up there. In parts of Mindanao as well, maybe up to 2 inches of rain, and there we are, up to 7 inches of rain up there in northern Luzon, which is nearly 200 millimetres. 5.7 inches which is nearly 150 millimeters on Palau uh, on Yap it's up to about uh, 75 inches millimeters oh my goodness and in Guam about 25 millimeters and in some parts of Micronesia where that storm goes or disturbance it could reach local amounts of 300 and here is the longer range then up through f day 5 to 10 and you can see the development of this typhoon. So the GFS still wants it to happen although it's going to be much later on according to the model here. Uh, only developing a tropical storm on day 9 which would be May 16th and then shooting up northwards just off the coast of Samar and then turning northeastwards as it strengthens. 
scan the barcode and that will take you through to the Force 13 merch store where you can take a look at all of our items as well as our full season and individual storm animations on request. We're still waiting for Hone by the way and there it is. You can get that t-shirt and uh, surprise everyone I guess. And uh, this is the silly range watching that typhoon blow up once again this time the GFS has a minimum pressure of 922 on that which is borderline category 5 moving northeastward shooting off uh, and looks like it should miss most of the Japanese islands as well which would be good news so interesting to see what will happen in that super long range but obviously again it's changed since the last updates and it could change again later on with a second storm forming there in the South China Sea at the very end of that run off the west coast of the Philippines. Well, not much happened on this day in history, but on May 8th, 1973, a little bit of a surprise for southwestern Australia, including the Perth area, where we had a hurricane force extratropical cyclone that was once named Cyclone Marcel, which was a, I think, a category three, or I can't remember now how strong that storm was out in the open Indian Ocean, but by this point, it was shooting into the southwestern part of Australia. Uh, and would be weakening quite quickly after that and there is the satellite image okay well back to today the first name on the Atlantic naming list coming up is Alberto in the eastern Pacific it's Aleta and in the central Pacific it is Hone we're at 16 storms so far this year which is uh, a little bit below average and in terms of cyclone energy we're running at about 31% below average at the moment. In the western Pacific a Winiar is next up and in the North Indian Ocean it will be Rimal. We are still unclassified for this uh, period and so there's no real alert. And in the Australian region, if we get another storm, it's Robin. In the Southwest Indian Ocean, Iali. And in the South Pacific, it's Pitta. That's all from today's Tropical Weather Bulletin. We'll be back again tomorrow.